Nigeria's Consumer Price Index, CPI, otherwise known as inflation, which measures how goods, cost of goods and services rise year on year, month on month, 22.22%, seems to have defied all efforts at bringing it down to single digit levels that the Central Bank of Nigeria has desired between 6 and 9%, 9%. So, what are the macroeconomics um, around Nigeria's stubborn inflation and its key components? Why is it still so high? And has inflation targeting by the Monetary Authority reached its limit of efficiency? They've been hiking rates, it's still going up. We have our guest in Abuja, uh, public policy analyst, senior economist at SPM Professionals, uh, Mr. Paul uh, Alaje. He's live with in Abuja. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. So, you know, why has Nigeria's inflation remained stubborn over such a long period of time? What's your take on this matter? very much for having me. There are several reasons why Nigeria inflation have turned from normal inflation to a runaway inflation, and if you like, so a somewhat galloping inflation, or what we generally call the stubborn inflation. I will group some of these reasons into four. Number one is policy inconsistency. Number two is the uh, negative externalities. Then we also have structural issue and other general issue. When it comes to policy, recall that in 2016, the government have said Nigeria will close the borders without providing alternative. That increased several prices, commodity prices, that was more or less some protection for some of the in Nigeria, inflation effectively went up. When central banks started raising interest rate, we started seeing reduction in inflationary figure. Other, another point is structural issues. Today, Nigerians are queuing. Tomorrow, it has to do with insecurity, and that, of course, is evident in food inflation, which currently is the main driver of inflation in Nigeria. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, is responsible for 24% percent, uh, 24 percent food inflation, while core inflation is even lower than the headline inflation. We also have what we call, ne I mean, negative externalities. Be we call something spillover effect. What is happening between Russia and Ukraine? Has a tremendous impact directly on Nigeria, and not just Nigeria, different part of the world, especially African nations that largely depend on importation. So when you look at and you look at that, the price of diesel in Nigeria increased from 270 to 930, and now it's gradually coming back to about 750. But it's never the rate it was before the war. COVID, another major global disaster, affected inflation in Nigeria to the point that inflation well very high during COVID. I must also mention issues that has to do with government. You know, when government of the day came, inflation was around 9%, uh, even though globally, the acceptable rate for inflation is three to 5%. The Central Bank of Nigeria had said, for Nigeria, government will high between six to 9%. As I speak to you, inflation is 22.22%, not my figures. Figures recently released by the National Bureau of Statistics stated that Nigeria inflation is 17 year high. You know, in the last seven, I mean, 17, it's been in the last 17 years, we've not had uh, this kind of uh, inflation in our history. But what's the last point here regarding uh, the root cause or the reason why Nigeria have this so much inflation is because of non-convergence in policy between fiscal authority, monetary authority, and trade authority. And we say policies are not converging. On one hand, the central bank is raising interest rate. On the other hand, the federal government says it will increase salaries of workers Federal government work, I must emphasize, by 40%. What will happen? Inflation that is already high at 22.22%. If government increase without increasing productivity, you and I, we go to the same market, civil servant, we go. Without increasing productivity, without providing alternative to subsidy to people, then we are even going to see a higher inflation. I hope Nigeria is looking at example of what happened in Sri Lanka, what has happened uh, even in Ghana, that took Ghana, uh, Ghana inflation for 11 percent to 40 percent, Ghana is asked to do everything possible now to bring that inflation. Unfortunately, even though Nigeria is committing economic errors that is making inflation to gun up, what I am not seeing or what we are not seeing as a body is what we bring that figure back to a single digit. Thank you so much for that breakdown. Now, as far as the dynamics of inflation within the Nigerian context, you've explained that. Do you think one is higher than any other? Is policy inconsistency, for instance, higher head and shoulders above the externalities like the war in Ukraine 
COVID and so on and so forth. Within the Nigerian context, as far as the dynamics of inflation are concerned, is there one that stands above all else? Structural issues. Uh, one of the reasons why food inflation continue to go high, it is because the fiscal authority have not done the part. What we have seen is that when inflation goes high in Nigeria, those in authority believe central banks should respond. In fact, many Nigerians and economists believe central banks should respond. Central bank cannot buy ammunition to protect farmers on their farms. So when farmers are not protected, they will go to the IDP camps. Food supply will significantly reduce when supply is reducing, and we continue to have 60,000 children every day by 11 p.m. What that means is that inflation will go because demand for food would increase, essentially. So because we are not solving structural issues, look at, look at most of our roads, uh, the roads are dilapidated, we have several farming areas where we don't have inroad into them because the roads are bad, people spend days to move commodities from where they are produced to urban center. We have so many articulated vehicles, we have so many trailers breaking down the road. I'm not sure if we're even checking the standard of this vehicle, time it should take to get to where they will be consumed or get to, into some our factories that are working, it's a big issue, structural issue. Not my figure, Smidan, official figure said two million factories closed down last year, two million. Uh, that's official figure, but unofficial figure says 5.1 million uh, uh, factories closed down. When you look at that, what were the issues? Absence of energy, absence of power supply, inability for them to compete with foreign counterparts because they have to fend for their road, they have to provide their water, they have to provide so many things by themselves. And I'm very hopeful that government of Nigeria will look at structural issues that is within our control while they hope for the ones that are outside our control. Fantastic. Now, um, so food inflation, um, there were some observations made at the last uh, Monetary Policy Committee meeting on food supply shocks. Um, and the governor of the central bank was talking about why food inflation continues to remain high. And you've echoed those. So he talked about high road transportation costs. He talked about security issues in food producing areas. You just talked about how farmers cannot arm themselves. You also talked about, you know, legacy infrastructure challenges. So what about the fiscal side? Does this all fall on the side, on the fiscal side? Are all these responsibilities in terms of how we can bring food inflation down, is that at the feet of the fiscal side of the equation? Fiscal side, a hundred percent. Fiscal authority must understand that security of the nation is in their hand, provision of infrastructure such as road, rail, air transport, all means of transportation to crash food inflation down, it is within their control, not in the control of monetary authority. Monetary authority, at best, we use monetary tools to find inflation, especially food inflation. We must also ensure, fiscal authority is also not planning. There is a point where we need to deliberately create policy that we focus on supply, increasing supply of food. Authority, though, through taxation, had said it was going to give some discount or some reduction or rebate, I beg your pardon, to importation of some vehicles that is used especially to move food. But that is so insignificant when you compare uh, that policy with what we're experiencing and what we're going through today. It is not sufficient to solve the problem. Food inflation is what monetary authority must do something about. Even when the factories are not working, you provide the food, some places in Nigeria, we are unable to process them. We cannot eat it's paddy. Paddy is raw rice. It has to be processed. When it gets, how long will it take from farm to the factory? So you have insecurity on one hand. You have inability, time, I mean, you're losing time on the other hand. You have flood, which of course is outside the central bank. Because of flood, the price of rice, 50 kg per bag, increased by 5,000 naira on the average. These are what fiscal authorities must work on. So when you ask me about fiscal, uh, who, who should take the responsibility for food inflation, even though the central bank will continue to control uh, money supply, manipulating uh, monetary policy rate, liquidity ratio, and cash reserve ratio or cash requirement as the case may be, is the responsibility of central bank. And you have even seen central bank going to intervene through so many programs and Coburn's program and so on and so forth. Even though I think 
that that should be in partnership with the fiscal authority. Fiscal authority in Nigeria is beyond paying contractors and paying salaries. And that is why over the time, we have argued for a coordinating minister of the economy who we understand that it's important to combine these different economic agencies of government so that we can have a result. Unfortunately, eight years down the line, we are still wondering when that will be done. Now, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to touch on that point. You are a, a senior economist with uh, SPM Professionals. The, the fiscal side, the executive, the presidency has advisors. He's got economic advisors. Um, do they not see what you see, and other analysts and economists are seeing? You just said that eight years down the line. Not, you know, nothing, the, the right choices have not been made. So, you know, they're, they're human beings like us. We talk about this all the time. What, 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 why, are they, why are the right decisions not being made? I mean, despite them having professionals like yourself, economists like yourself at Asso Rock, what, what are they missing? What's the fiscal side? Is it stubbornness? Is it, what, what do you think it could be? Well, I really don't work directly with government or work as government. I don't work directly for government or as a staff of government. But I haven't spoken with some of the colleagues who are economists and working for government. What they've also mentioned to me is that it's one thing to advise is another thing to allow the advice they've provided to be implemented. So. Economists will give advice until you give the, an economist that room to help you implement some of the policies. It could still remain a challenge. So for those that are on the side of government, even though I believe they are competent and they should be allowed to do the work. If not, some of us will be worried because we're very excited when government said, eventually, after we had clamor for having an economic team and government started mentioning names of those we have respect for, you know, within our space. But unfortunately, even though government has announced this thing, the work, the, the, the paper they've presented, the work they've done is still a, is something that many of us are and searching for. Uh, about a minute ago, what about the average Nigerian on the street? What are the consequences of sticky, stubborn, unbearable inflation on the economy, the average Nigerian investments and so on? So many things. First of all, an investor will not come into your country if your inflation remains stubborn and untamable. Don't believe me. Believe the National Bureau of Statistics. Bureau of Statistics reveal that in five years' time, the value of foreign, I mean, the value of investment to Nigeria has reduced by 80%, starting with foreign direct investment, the most critical investment a nation should have, to portfolio investment and to other investment. All this investment in the space of five years has reduced in value by nearly 80%. What does that mean? There are so many factors, insecurity, so many structural issues, issues are enumerated when you ask your false questions. But more importantly, when all of these issues have led to inflation, what someone from outside Nigeria or business or corporate outside Nigeria is observing is, if I invest my money in Nigeria, an economy that is losing value in terms of the, the value of its local currency, called Naira, two, if I want to take my money back from this economy, what will be the rate of inflation? Let me say this, anyone listening or watching right now, and he earned 250,000 Naira January 1st, 2021. If the person we see earn 250,000 by 31st December 2023, what the person we earn by December is not more 250,000, what he would earn it will become 100,000, even though on the check, 250 will be written. Why? Because the Bureau of Statistics revealed that the average inflation rate is 20%. And you can see the number if you can project for people to see how inflation have been consistently suborn from 2021 even till date. And the projection that many have, have, have said to Nigeria, inflation may see remain double digit, even though we hope that when there is a change of button, the new administration will come with fresh energy and do something meaningful, significant with inflation in terms of policy to bring down inflation by considering the supply side, stra the supply side strategy to bring down what inflation is saying today. So, so for me, it, 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 it's, it's affecting people already. World Bank is saying average of 5 million people is thrown into poverty bracket. 
for them. Someone who earned 30,000 Naira in 2020. How much is the value of that money today? Is this 30,000 Naira? If you use merely two, two, I mean 20% of 30,000 on, on, on annual basis, the first year, remove 30% of 30,000, second, third, fourth, and, and, and check what the number will be. Even if the person is getting promoted, the increase in his salary, is it up to 20% again? How do people invest? It's a disincentive to investment. How do I come to your economy and do portfolio investment at 7, 8, 9, 10% when your inflation will take over 20% away from me? These are reasons why investment is not flowing to Nigeria beyond the insecurity because you don't need to travel to, to uh, Sambisa Forest to invest in the Nigeria exchange when inflation is significantly higher than the return on investment, then it doesn't make sense. So authority must know that to save Nigeria from poverty, hunger, deprivation, high unemployment because businesses are not coming to this territory as we expect based on our numbers at March uh, 2023. The estimate is about 222 million people. But, but what are we going to eat? What are we, which road are we going to use? Investment must come for us to have, in fact, to even uh, support the effort of central go I mean, the, the central bank and the federal government in terms of exchange rates. But we are not having enough of effect. We are not having enough of investment, both local and those that are abroad, then it's a big issue for us to bother about. Excellent conversation. Uh, Mr. Paul Ajay in our Abuja studios, uh, senior economist, SPM professionals, thank you so much for talking to us about what needs to be done to put in fake inflation down and also uh, the impact it's having on investments and also on the average Nigerian. Great conversation.